Halifax speaking with Neil Young this afternoon from Alexa Energy. Neil, good afternoon. Afternoon to you, Andrew. Always a pleasure. Look, you've announced this morning operations at Daydream 2. They've now wrapped up. Uh, what are your main conclusions? So we started this well nearly a year ago in, in Q4 last year. And, and overall, it's delivered a whole suite of very, very positive results. And um, this was the single commitment well in this license. It's now finished. We don't have any further commitments. And under Queensland law, that allows us to apply for an up to 15 year retention lease um, with no real material expenditure in that period. What we've done is taken a small initial contingent resource. We've significantly increased that. We've added a massive prospective resource, which we've increased. We expect uh, further contingent resources from part of the prospective resources as we flowed coals from a, for a number of different zones. Um, we've discovered the Laurel sandstone um, in our block, which free flowed. And we've, we've flowed gas now from five out of six stimulated zones, including the Laurel. So a whole swag of data there, which is incredibly useful to inform how we and our likely partners take this very large asset forward from here. What are your, what's your view on the flow rates? So we announced a flow rate of about 2.5 million a day about a month ago. Then key equipment had to go away and had to come back. And today we've announced a flow rate of a million a day. So that's clearly less and clearly the market has reacted negatively to that. Now, our clear view is that that's an overreaction, given this is an unconventional well. The size of the resource has not been diminished at all. Rather, we have learned... Uh, valuable information as to how to take that resource out more effectively in the future. Now, what our team thinks has happened is that these deep, tight, overpressured reservoirs are very sensitive little creatures. And if you if you don't give them some TLC and take equipment away and then bring it back, then they can sulk big time with you. Of course, this is Neil's technical wording, not that of the geologists and engineers. And so we think those those reservoirs have sulked because of that behavior and that there could be some degree of uh, uh, blockages caused by water and condensate that with different treatments in the future would not, not arise. So it's absolutely not something that reduces resource size, let alone being anything terminal. It's, it's not uncommon in tight gas plays. The, this total play in America, we're in our first well in, less than 10 wells in, in total in the overall play. Uh, in American terms, they, they, they just laugh at you on that sort of level. I mean, we and our neighbours have achieved an awful lot with those 10 wells and achieved enough to be highly confident that we can continue work programmes by ourselves or hopefully with the large partners that we're in, uh, potentially engaging with to take this forward and deliver large amounts of gas to the markets that desperately need it. And of course, we're seeing Shell uh, spend considerable amounts of cash exploring. So they clearly like the area. I mean, absolutely. Now, they, they say very little public about this. So everything I'm saying is speculative. But we consider that they're spending a few hundred million dollars on their current program. Uh, we know that they, like us, have had some wells that have had issues that, that were suboptimal and some wells that, again, based on, on just speculation, look to have gone very well. That's, that's the game that we're in. And uh, it's great to be a neighbor of one of the world's largest companies uh, in, in the same play. And uh, to the extent that we can keep an eye on what they're doing, um, we, we're very keen to do so. And then we have, have another neighbor who is a similar ASX company and uh, they're in an active program just now. We wish them the best of luck. We're all learning from each other. And it's easier to learn when juniors are disclosing information to the ASX. But even beyond that, we have a, like a data sharing agreement with Santos who are in the play as well. So there is a lot of collaboration of different types. Uh, we're trying different things. We're learning from each other. And uh, we are doing what I call cracking the code of an unconventional play collectively. And uh, the, the, there's an enormous amount of gas here. But tell you what, Australia and the Glaston LNG plants need it all. So uh, there's no competition there. It, it's collaboration when we can. And let's all bring this forward. Uh, and, and the country really needs it, unfortunately. And importantly, uh, Alexa received some government co-funding, I believe, for this well. Correct. We, we received a, quite a while ago an advanced finding that this well would qualify for uh, R&D tax credits, which pay for 48.5% of the well costs. 
Um, to, so every dollar we spend, the government gives us 50 cents back in effect. So although the well that we just drilled has not been cheap, for, from the point of view of our shareholders, it's a half price well. And so accordingly, our cash position is still pretty robust. Um, we'll obviously have more information on that in our next quarterly in a few weeks time. But so no, we emerged from, from an expensive but very value adding well, much better off than we otherwise would have been without that support, which we, we obtained in a way I've just described. And so where to from here, Neil, for Alexa? You're, you're starting to put some early thinking towards Daydream 3, are you? Correct. So, I mean, the, as I said, we're only less than 10 wells into this overall play. We can learn an enormous amount by drilling another well, taking the learnings of what we and our neighbours have been doing recently to that well. Um, and our planning for that is, is now accelerating. Now, in parallel, we're accelerating the discussions with potential pharmacies, which we've been flagging for a long time. Clearly, those parties, if they close a deal quickly, will have input uh, into that well. So we're balancing not closing our optionality with them versus not going too slow to accommodate a sloth like a big company's occasional behavior. So that's the balance which we, you know, we've been reasonably good at doing today and which we're managing just now and in the, in the short, medium term to come. Good to see you, Neil. Thanks for your time. Thank you.